guest tonight is an Academy Award-nominated actor you know from films like Batman, Birdman, and Spotlight. You can see him in The Trial of the Chicago 7, which is available on Netflix now. Let's take a look. Hey, Bill. Ramsey Clark. Pleased to meet you, sir. This, this is Leonard Wineglass. Mr. Wineglass. And Tom Hayden. Oh, I know who Tom Hayden is. The FBI used to work for me. Those two men are senior deputies with the Justice Department. That's Mr. Kelly and Mr. Ackerman. Well, I don't know why these men are here. I invited them. You invited them? I don't want the appearance of impropriety. There isn't any impropriety. And now there are witnesses to that. Please welcome back to the show one of our favorites, Michael Keaton. How are you, Michael? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, you know, it's... Uh... Hey, should, before we start, just be fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Right. I'm glad you said that. I'm you know what? Because these were going to be real tough ones. <laughs> round the corner. Round the corner and be fair. It, it, by the way, as I'm sorry, I have this on. I just went out for a minute. Uh, look at this. I'm going to show you something. Great. I can't wait. Speaking of being fair. Can you yeah, see look that? at that. Yeah, but look at you speaking. Wait, wait. How do I do this? Here. The other way. The other way. What are you trying to other show way. me? I'm trying to say, look at you. Speaking of being fair, you're trying to hypnotize me. <laughs> look, look at you with that some kind of Spock hand gesture. <laughs> it's been really, I actually say it's a great disadvantage because I'm having no luck hypnotizing over Zoom. I <laughs> did like nothing. <laughs> Man, tuna fish. Half a, half a tuna fish salad sandwich in a briefcase. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Oh, man, that's good. That's Thank strong. You, you know, I just, not... This is odd to do. By the way, can I say this? Yeah. This is odd to do. Look at those hands, by the way. That's just way too much. <laughs> um, in the afternoon, it feels funny. Like, this feels like these shows should be uh, at night. Frankly. I know. So I had to get some coffee to kind of wake up a little bit. You're, and, uh, uh, I mean, you're coming off as a guy who's, uh, who's fully awake. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Good. That's, that's the standard. Yeah, you have to wait. <laughs> um, hey, no, I want to uh, talk I about... This uh, woman, this barista, this bar barista? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So I went and she was, that's, you know, I was wearing this and I'm very cautious out there. So I ventured out to get some coffee. And she was really perky, like way too perky for me, and really loud when she took my order. And there was a plexiglass thing in the front and everything. She was nice enough, but she kept going, hi, like, like, hi. And, and she kept saying, what's your name? What's your name? Like, kind of like when a Santa's helpers would say it, uh -huh. you know, what's your name? <laughs> and it's free. And I'm kind of, when I'm out there, I'm very nervous. You could just see, like, the COVID splashing against <laughs> just it was just hitting the plexiglass and you just want to walk out anyway it made me very very nervous but you know what we're good because we've got Scott Atlas on top of <laughs> that's true everything's under control but wait, is that not the greatest name does that not sound like he sat that name I, the only thing better than Scott Atlas would have been like Johnny Atlas but but Scott Atlas sounds like a, a teen star from the 80s, doesn't he? Yeah, it's like they gave Trump a list of doctors and he just picked the name that sounded <laughs> like yes. the coolest looking dude. Yeah. Hi, I'm Scott. <laughs> hey, gang, I'm Scott Atlas. I'll be at the Fairhaven Mall this week promoting my new album. <laughs> oh, my God. The girls are going crazy for Scott Atlas. They're lined around the block. Um, hey, this, uh, this movie is so great, and it's, a, it's an Aaron Sorkin script. And I have yeah. to imagine, as an actor, there are just certain writers where it's just a delight to do their dialogue. And not only do you get to do Sorkin dialogue, you get to do Sorkin courtroom dialogue, which is maybe, yeah. maybe his that's highest right. tier. That's right. That's right. That is, that's a bump up. And you know what he also does if you watch, first of all, this cast in this movie, and this movie is so good. Uh, but but if you notice, that's exactly right. When you get into the courtroom or anything like that, it actually bumps up. But when you watch this movie and, and what he does is you'll be right in the long stretch of uh, a, a dramatic, tension-filled scene. And he'll just drop. 
but just drop like a, re- a gem of a joke, a gem of a funny line in that kind of, you know, kind of, you know, lifts everything up for a minute. It, it, it was really fun to work with. And it was a, it's a really, really terrific movie, I think. Um, I, I do want to, because again, there's this scene in the courtroom and as an actor, like, is it uh, thrilling or intimidating? I mean, just uh, the people that are watching you do your thing, like Frank Langella, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yeah. Mark Rylance, yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen, Jeremy Strong, I know I'm leaving people out. I mean, is it, does it make it more fun? Or, or even after doing this a long time, you're like, oh, there's some real A-listers here. You know, absolutely. That's a great question. Absolutely makes it more fun now. You want to be in that. It's like playing pickup basketball, you know, when you say, yeah, I've been on the park and play a little bit. But the whole rhythm of everything, when everybody is so much better uh, or, or so good or, or around you. The only thing that happened when I, was, when I did the first Batman was I was very, I was pretty nervous and self-conscious about being with, with, with Jack. Uh, sure. Because he's so strong on film, you know, and, uh, and it ended up just being great, you know, uh, just being great and became pals and everything. But yeah, that's a good question. No, it felt pretty good, actually. Do you think, like, when you think back to Batman and you're saying that, that, of course, makes sense. Do you think Jack Nicholson then and, and throughout his career, at certainly that point of his career, do you think he was aware that people would be, you know, intimidated to work with him? Did he have to go out of his way to be disarming? That's great. You know, I don't know. I don't know that I've ever thought of it like that. That's a great, that's a great question. Um, I would say, yeah, he probably, he probably was pretty aware of his power. Um, and he was so, he had so much power on screen, you know, has, uh, but it was just cool. You know, I mean, he, he made, he made everybody feel really, really relaxed, you know, someday in, in, in private, I'll tell you how he would greet the crew in the morning. <laughs> Certainly can't do it uh, on national television. <laughs> hey, by the way, your pop's name's Larry, right? Yeah, Larry. Hey, Larry. There we go. Now I'm glad we're yeah, going to finish baby. with this. Yeah, we'll, baby. We'll be very happy. Uh, five and zero. Oh, we got the five and zero oh Steelers uh, against. I think though, I guess the five and zero oh Titans. How are you yeah, feeling about the Steelers this season? Great so far. I mean, yeah. this is this is fun uh, so far. We'll, we'll we'll see. But you know, I'm a fan of all those all those teams. And uh, I, I know you've been tweeting a lot about uh, Pennsylvania politics, and you know we were mentioning yeah. Obama was there yesterday, and. Uh, yeah. I, I know you were really politically engaged as a kid, thanks to your parents. Your dad, everybody's talking about having a plan for voting. Your dad gave you a very specific plan when you were voting. Yes. Out. Yes. My dad was commissioner for a while, and he was very involved uh, locally. You know, he's, he's a working man's Democrat, you know. And um, it was, so it was always in my consciousness. Uh, and to, just to show you, uh, how important it is to vote. It was, we, I grew up between two kind of tough little mill towns, you know, uh, Coriopolis and uh, McKee's Rock. And, but in the center, it was rural and we were kind of country kids. So it was small, the population was small in the township. And my dad, uh, I, when it became legal to vote at 18, I could not wait to vote. Uh, and, but my dad <laughs> kind of told us how to vote. He said, okay, now here's who you vote for when you leave today. <laughs> So, so I go, okay. And I, he told me and I went, yeah, all right. That all sounds reasonable. So I go to the polls and, uh, and there was no line or anything. This was a small town. I go, check, 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 check. And then it comes to, I don't remember where it was. It was like water commissioner or something. And I go, what did he say to vote for? I, go, I can't remember. I just leave, I just leave that blank. So I go tell my sister, Pam, I go, Hey, Pam, who was I supposed to vote for? Because I couldn't remember. And she told me, I went, well, I don't know. I just left the blank. My hand to God, this is true. We're sitting at the dinner table. And there was a conversation. And my dad goes, how about, I'll say Mary Smith. I don't remember her name. How about Mary Smith losing by one vote like that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear to God, I looked across the table at my sister. And she just like put her hand down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is a good so reminder both. for everybody uh, to remember to have a plan on election day because uh, it can all fall apart. There we go. It's upside down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> remember, Michael, Michael Keaton tells you to etov. <laughs> <laughs> That's code. That's code for something. Oh, gotcha. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Hey, thanks for being here, buddy. I really hope and next time in person, uh, 
So you can, uh, you can tell me what Jack Nicholson said. That is Michael uh, Keaton. The trial of the Chicago 7 is available on Netflix now.